Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and here is a beautiful monarch butterfly on a milkweed plant. Most people know that milkweed plants will have monarch caterpillars on them, but there's four other organisms you're very likely to find on milkweed, and this episode is all about the four organisms you're likely to see when you go out and look at milkweed plants besides monarch caterpillars. Milkweed is not just for monarchs. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Milkweed really has its own ecosystem. And one of the first things you need to understand about milkweed is it's toxic. And it's toxic because over time, it developed ways to resist herbivory or prevent or be distasteful to herbivores so they won't eat it. Milkweed has this white sticky sap, which itself is distasteful both to vertebrates and invertebrates that might eat it, but it also has cardiac glycosides. These cardiac glycosides are defense mechanism for the plant, making it unpalatable and potentially harmful for many animals, both mammals and insects. There are other organisms that co-evolved with the milkweed and have developed natural resistance to them. One of them, of course, is our beloved monarch butterfly, monarch caterpillar, and both the caterpillars and the black and orange butterflies are toxic or unpalatable to organisms. And that black and orange color serves as a warning mechanism to indicate and to remind organisms that they are toxic. One of my favorite and sometimes more obvious milkweed feeders, along with the monarch caterpillars, are the tussock moth caterpillars, sometimes called tiger moth caterpillars because of their bright black-orange uh, coloration along with some tinges of white. This species also co-evolved with milkweed and feeds only on milkweed as its host plant. And these caterpillars as well will take on their toxic nature and are further protected by their hairiness. While the brightly colored black and orange hairy caterpillars warn of their toxicity through their color, the moths are surprisingly dull, drab, and just a plain white. Now you got to remember that the moths are active at night, so flying at night with bright colors isn't going to help them by advertising any kind of toxicity like the daytime flying black and orange monarchs do. However, in another miracle of nature, they emit ultrasonic singles to warn bats of their toxicity. So bats can recognize these moths when they're flying and remember them as the one that was unpalatable or made them sick the last time they had one. These brightly colored black and orange milkweed bugs also co-evolved with milkweed and feed pretty much strictly on milkweed. And more specifically, they use a long proboscis to reach through the milkweed pod and feed on the seeds that are inside. Milkweed bugs are true bugs, meaning that they are hemipterans, which means they go through incomplete metamorphosis. So as they grow, once they've hatched from an egg, the small milkweed bugs, their early stages, technically known as nymphs, look very similar to the adults, except they lack wings and some of their size. So here, when you see milkweed bugs on a plant, you'll be able to see various sizes of them as they go through their life cycle. Milkweed bugs, again, are toxic, and again, are using this classic color in nature, this black and orange coloration to indicate they are unpalatable, distasteful, toxic, sick or simply dangerous. Ecologically, very much like the tussock moth caterpillars, milkweed bugs are going to do very little damage to your plants, are not big competitors with the monarch caterpillars, won't hurt the caterpillars or the eggs in either way, and you're okay knowing that tussock moth caterpillars and milkweed bugs are out there on your plants and it's not going to be deleterious either to your milkweed or to your monarchs. 
A third species you're very likely to find on your milkweed plants, though not in large numbers, and usually you'll only see one or two at a time, is the red milkweed beetle. So this is different from a bug because this organism undergoes complete metamorphosis. These guys also co-evolved with the milkweed plant. They also have this aposematic coloration, in this case a red and black, a little bit variation on the orange and black, and they advertise their toxicity or their unpalatableness to other predators. The fourth organism you're all likely to see on your milkweed plants, along with the monarch caterpillars and these other organisms talked about, are these aphids. There are several species of aphids. There's some native species that may be on the plants, but most of the time when you see them in large numbers, they're a non-native invasive aphid species called the oleander aphids which typically had fed on oleander plants. They've moved on now and find milkweed to be a really great host. They're bright yellow orange, aposematic coloration. These guys, while they did not co-evolve with milkweed, they still take on some of those cardiac glycosides, so you don't often see other insects or organisms feeding on them. Unlike the organisms I've told you about so far, these can have disastrous effects on a milkweed plant. They seem to gang up on particular plants, maybe the ones that are the most weakened, and they can deplete that milkweed plant of nutrients, harm its growth, and then indirectly, not directly harming or eating, caterpillars or eggs, but indirectly harm monarch caterpillars by taking away the nutrition of the milkweed plant or preventing it from developing completely. Here you can see that aphids also develop by incomplete metamorphosis with gradual changes and stages as they get older. And the aphids can also do another thing that's very unusual, and that's reproduced by parthenogenesis. So a female, essentially, and you can sometimes see it actually occurring, will squirt out babies. They don't have to lay eggs. The eggs don't have to hatch. They don't have to go through the sexual reproduction as we know it. They they can just produce new offspring by parthenogenesis. So a plant with a few females on it, when those things are passing out new offspring directly from their bodies, that population can grow, as you can imagine, very rapidly with very harmful effects on the plant. Though many people keep milkweed specifically for monarchs, and as I told you, the first three you really don't have to worry about. But these aphids can cause a lot of damage, so how do you get rid of them? Well, there's really no good way, because if you spray them with pesticides, and then you'll kill the tussocks moths, the milkweed bugs, the milkweed beetles, as well as the monarchs. So basically, <laughs> Your best bet to do this, and this is what I've done with my milkweed plants when I raised caterpillars in my classroom or I raised them at home, is I squish them. You might want to put a rubber glove on if you have large numbers of them because it's going to get really messy. But the best way to get rid of them is to see them and squish them. Of course, this is not so practical if you have a whole field of it, but in your garden or at home, it is a method that you can use to get rid of the aphids and reduce that competition with the monarch caterpillars. I love the monarch caterpillars and the butterflies and want to do everything we can to protect this endangered migration phenomena where these butterflies from all across the East Coast up to Canada migrate to the El Rosario and other roosts and the Transvolcanic Mountain Range in Mexico. Please, if you're interested in monarchs, check out my monarch playlists. I'd have lots of really great videos on milkweed, how to find monarch eggs, how to rear caterpillars, uh, more on the endangerment problems, and many other things. Check out my Monarchs playlist. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Or share with me your experiences raising Monarchs. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of 
nature at your door.